We're thrilled today uh, to have one of our great representatives, uh, former athletes, in uh, Terrence Ganaway. Uh, Terrence has always been a tremendous representative of, uh, of Baylor and our letter winner's body, uh, uh, even when he was an athlete and even now uh, that he's uh, gone on to, to raise a family and, and uh, is working in the real world. He's doing an amazing job uh, uh, just uh, being a tremendous asset in terms of a representative or an ambassador for Baylor University. And we're thrilled to have him today. Now, you all remember uh, Terrence because uh, if you're like me, a lot of people remember one play that I, or one game that I played in years ago. Out of four years here at Baylor and uh, eight years in NFL, they remember one play. And that was the game against Texas A&M uh, my freshman year. Well, it's kind of the same uh, thing with Terrence. I, now, all the great things he's done, all the great plays he's had, and, uh, and I remember one play, and I, we talked about this yesterday, but that one play was when he picked up that ball during the Texas Tech game, you all remember that, and ran it all the way for a touchdown. It, it was, it was a, a punt or kick, kick return, I think. And everybody cleared the way, and uh, I think they thought the ball was going to be down, and Terrence with his head in the game, Head in the game, saw that ball, picked it up, and nobody expected it, man. Uh, and then that was he ran it all the way for a touchdown. That was a, that was the play I remember of you, Terrence. And uh, not to say that you haven't had other plays after that, but uh, but that was one that sticks out in my head. And so I'm I'm just going to turn it over to you. I know you all excited to listen to Terrence, and uh, I'm going to turn it over to J Mo, the voice of the Bears, and you guys can get to know Terrence a little bit more about what his life is like now. Take it away, Johnny. All right, Walter, thank you very much. Uh, I would contend with that I have the greatest job in the world, but uh, <laughs> you can have that and I'll take this and I'm glad to be a part of this. And we're glad to have Terrence with us today. Terrence, uh, thanks for your time. How you doing? I'm doing great uh, out here uh, in Galveston with the family. Uh, we left our dog behind, but I'm, I'm telling you, these kids have acted nothing short of animals this week. So uh, it's, it's time to go get the leashes and put them on a leash uh, and walk the beach later today. Well, you know, you know how Zoom calls are. We're all working from home. So if at any point your kids or anybody want to jump on the Zoom call, you bring them on in, okay? We'd welcome that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I got them locked off right now. So we're, we're, we're good for an hour. I can't, I can't promise you anymore. Very good. I got two dogs that are sleeping right now. I can't promise they'll stay asleep the whole time, yeah. but it's great to have you with us. It's great to catch up. Uh, it's funny. Walter remembers that one play. I remember that one very distinctly. We'll talk about that, but man, so many highlights for you during your Baylor career. Uh, as you look back on your career, you know, in total at Baylor, uh, what are the highlights in your mind? What stands out the most? You know, um, really the, the practice, weeks up until we played TCU my senior year. I mean, that was just a fun time. It, you could just tell everyone was locked in, ready to go. TCU had just came off a big Rose Bowl win. Um, they had two great linebackers who, you know, led their conference. And, you know, they smacked us the year before. Coach Kaz got into it with some of the fans after the game. Everyone's seen that video. Um, and, you know, we, we just wanted to go out there and play. And the, I remember, you know, saying before the game and the and, you know, media said that, you know, they asked me how I felt about the game. And I said, the game was already won. All we had to do is go out there and execute it. And he jumped down my throat and said, that's locker room material. I didn't even know what locker room material was. <laughs> uh, because locker to, to me, and, and Walter may be able to chime in on him, locker room material only lasts until kickoff. And then, you know, then you got to – that's when the rubber meets the road. So, you know, that TCU game and, you know, some of the situations in that game that, you know, helped us, <clears throat> you know, you know, ride to the top. Uh, and then I would say the Oklahoma game, you know, because, you know, everyone – we were down late in the game. We rallied back. We got ahead. And then they tied it up. And we, we got the ball back. And we're thinking, all right, let's just go to OT. Let's win in OT. And, you know, I was in. Um, uh, I was in, sorry, my computer just bugged out. Um, I was in on that final drive and then coach pulled us out and he went five wide. And, and I'm just thinking like, I don't know if we're going to, you know, do this. And then you know, see Terrence Williams opening the back of the end zone. 
he catches the ball, Robert scrambles, he take a big shot, and, you know, we win the game. And then we, you know, recover the, the next kickoff uh, because Oklahoma was not in the game. And, you know, those two memories were probably the most fun memory, memories uh, I had at Baylor outside of that uh, Washington game, which was just fun just to be on the sidelines for half of that game and watch what was happening. Yeah, track meet in the Alamo Bowl, your last game at Baylor. That that was 2011. The game uh, or the play that Walter was talking about was uh, 2010, wasn't it? Baylor, Texas Tech. Uh, that series was a neutral site series for eight or nine years, and that game was the only one of those that was at the Cotton Bowl uh, in Dallas. Uh, describe describe that play that Walter was talking about. It was a kickoff and, and an onside kick, and you and most people are just around watching the ball, but you pounced on it and ran with it. Uh, explain what was going through your mind on that play. Yeah, you know, you know, Coach Dino Babers was the special team coach at the time, and you know, I got cussed out after the game uh, <laughs> because I left too early. And and what you want to do on a kickoff return, you don't want to leave until the until you see the ball is kicked. Uh, and I left early, but the ball wasn't kicked. You know, I, I kept watching the ball. So I ran over there, and I'm just, you know, I've always thought that if, if the ball was dead like that or it was coming to me, I'm just snagging and surprise everyone. And so as I went over there and I went to bend down and, you know, scoop it up, they kind of took a step back as well. So the timing of it was, was great, and then it was just a foot race to the end zone. Um, I'm surprised I didn't get caught. Uh, I probably had a, a – too many omelets that morning because that was an early kickoff. Um, but, man, uh, got to the sideline. The coaches were like, what are you thinking? What are you doing? And they just laughing and, and joking with me, high-fiving. I, I, mean, I really wish we would have won that game. But we found out a lot about ourselves uh, throughout the course of that game. You, uh, you kind of had a career against Texas Tech, didn't you? I mean, that game and then 2011, that game against Texas Tech was uh, unbelievable for you. Yeah, it was, it was great. Um, I had a, a ton of carries, uh, 45, 46 carries, 41. I, it was a lot. I got hit a lot and uh, had uh, almost 250 yards of rushing, which uh, would have been a, a record at that time. Uh, Johnny Jefferson would go on and break that record uh, in the bowl game against North Carolina a few years later. But it's um, – Texas Tech was, was my Texas and A&M to a lot of people. Texas Tech and TCU, you know, I hated them more than anyone because I felt that they were true rivals. You know, Texas was great all those years. Oklahoma was great all year. a and has probably always been garbage, but we let them have what they, they want to have, say they have. Um, but, you know, TCU and Texas Tech, it, it didn't take much for me to get excited about playing those two teams because we're all in the middle of the pack of, of the league anyways. Uh, so it just made it a lot more fun for me. Um, and, uh, yeah, I had a good season, a good game that my senior season against Tech. Yeah, I would say uh, uh, 42 carries, 246 yards. So unbelievable against Tech yeah. in, in 2011. That 2011 season, of course, Rob won the Heisman. But, but man, the offense was just unbelievable. And you were a big part of that single season uh, rushing record for Baylor uh, that you had that year, 1,547 yards. But, but what was it like being a part of that offense with a Heisman Trophy winner at quarterback and you and Terrence Williams and all the uh, offensive uh, weapons you guys had? Man, it was great. We, we could do anything with the ball. And we truly believed that. Uh, and also, we had to believe that we had to score 60 points to win a game. Uh, defense, we had some great defensive players on the defensive side of the ball, but we knew that we put our defense in a bind by scoring so quick uh, and that we needed to keep scoring every time we touched the ball. So it was always, you know, a foot race to the end zone. And, I mean, it, you put any running back there, I, I don't think I was anything special. Um, I think there's a lot of great running backs uh, that are ahead of me in, in Baylor's history. We just had a really solid O-line. Um, and, you know, several of those guys got drafted. They went on to play in the NFL uh, in, in some capacity. Uh, and then you had four receivers that had the opportunity to play in the NFL quarterback. Um, and, and so when you have a team that dynamic and that talented, it's easy to kind of be a disguise and get away with it, you know, and hide in that offense. But, you know, our Browse was a, a genius when it came to putting people in, in opportunities and space to make plays. 
And uh, Robert was just one of the best players that uh, you ever see in college football. How much uh, pride do you, did you guys take being a part of Robert winning the Heisman that year? I mean, he, he didn't win it by himself. He had a great year, but you were all a part of that. Oh, 100%. I mean, I remember us practicing, you know, um, because he was up in New York and we're practicing for the bowl game a couple of times and just not having him there. But we're all like wondering, like, hey, is he going to win? He won this. Like, what do you think? It was just a huge distraction in practice. But I think Coach understood, you know, why we were, you know, uh, um, feeling that way. And just to see him walk back in the, the huddle or the, the gym and the locker room after it, uh, it was just amazing, man. It was, it was truly remarkable to uh, think when you, you know, think about how great of a player he was and just to be in his presence. Uh, but not only that, he, he worked hard. He set the tone. He wasn't one of these guys that is like, you know, I'm better than everyone on this team. Um, uh, he, he played with a tenacity that you had to meet or, um, quite frankly, you weren't going to get along with him. And so we, he, he made us better. Uh, I'm sure he would say we made him better, but I, I think most of the people will agree that Robert made everyone on that team uh, faster, stronger, uh, and, and much, uh, much more better uh, football player. I kind of remember, tell me how you remember it, uh, the night Rob got back from New York, y'all were having an evening practice, I think made it evening uh, so he could be a part of it when he got back. Uh, do you remember that? Do you remember that uh, yeah. that scene out there in the Allison Indoor? Yeah, it, it, I mean, it was uh, – you know, we, we had a couple of uh, – we had practice after that. He showed up late. Um, but it, it was fun, man. It, we were just joking around. Uh, we already knew all the plays. And it, this was the practice before the, the, the week-long break, before you come back to, you know, San Antonio for you know, the real practices. So uh, a lot of emphasis wasn't on, you know, being great and being perfect. It was just out there making sure we're staying out of trouble, you know, finishing up finals and stuff like that. But, um, man, it was fun just to have him walk back in. It was like, uh, we walked G the walk like we watched Jesus walk through those, uh, those doors and just a little halo around him. And like, man, this guy really did it. Um, man, it was just a really special season for, for everyone. And I know Robert has a ton of memories about that, but, Man, we were so proud of him. We're proud of our team, proud of our coaches. Uh, it was just something special to be a part of in any facet, like managers, you know, coaches, associates, you know, water guys, you know, everyone that did what that was on that team felt special when, you know, he walked in there. Man, we were all a part of that Heisman Trophy winner, uh, win. And, uh, man, I, I told Robert, I tell Robert all the time if he would have handed me the ball more. I probably would have won the Heisman. But I'm happy. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's pretty good. The uh, that season, 2011, capped by uh, a wild uh, Valero Alamo Bowl game in San Antonio. And you talked about your mindset of the offense that you had to outscore teams to win. Nothing exemplified that more than that game, right? 67 to 50, 67 to 56 over uh, Washington. Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, <clears throat> you, you, when you think about it, you know, we played Kansas earlier in the year, and Kansas was up on us 21 nothing. And I remember Coach Levy, uh, who's now at uh, Ole Miss uh, now, him calling down and saying, hey, we're going to pass the ball a lot just to get back in the game, so get ready to, you know, block your tail off. And so he called me in the middle of the Alamo Bowl, and he's like, hey, you know, get ready, you know, to block your tail off. And I mean, most people know me. I never say choice words, but I ha I had to tell him how I really felt about that. And I told him in some, you know, words, some uh, that we might uh, call colorful at Baylor. Okay. But I told him to hand me the ball, and the next play we got the ball, and you know, 89 yard touchdown run. Yep. Um, and then I remember late in the game, you know, Coach Kendall saying that, hey, we're going to slow it down. We're going to run the, you know, we're going to run it, run the ball out. And I said, no, nah, forget that as well. Let's hand me the ball. And I scored on that play as well. So um, <laughs> I think we found a weakness in that defense. But it was because Terrence Williams, you know, Lanier Sampson, Tevin Reese, Salubi, uh, uh, Kendall Wright had such a great um, game out on the perimeter 
that it opened up a lot of stuff internal to that to that defense. And I don't think the Washington State defensive coordinator ever left San Antonio. Uh, at least he didn't leave San Antonio with Washington. I think he was fired after the game. <laughs> um, but, man, you're talking about a fun game, back and forth, back and forth. We didn't know what was going to happen. So many points were scored in each quarter, it felt like. And, uh, and uh, I, I just – one of the most memorable – rememberable plays was when Robert uh, scrambled for his touchdown in the first half. And he was just like, that's why he won the Heisman. Uh, and just special player, like breaking tackles, sl slipping through things and making plays like that. That's, that's what really made him special and, and got our, our bloods boiling on the sideline. So it was a long game, man. Boy, wild game. Great memory there. Didn't Salubi have a big block downfield on that touchdown run? He, he did. He did. So, yeah. Yeah, and that was one of – and you had 200 yards in the game, uh, one of three 200-yard games you had at Baylor, and five touchdowns. Uh, let's not uh, slip over that. You had five touchdowns in that game. Well, a couple of those touchdowns, I just laid over the uh, – No, they still count. They still count for six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think a couple of – you know, Tevin Reese might have ran down to, like, the half-yard line. So yeah. And they were like, you know, talking to me after the game that I stole their touchdown. I was like, man, I, 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 you should have scored, man. You That's get the right. top line. It ain't my fault. So uh, we, we, um, <clears throat> well, offensive line was great that game. I mean, they just manhandled, you know, some of those bigger guys from Washington who went on and played in the, in the NFL. Uh, but um, man, we had a, a, a ton of fun against that team. You might have had a couple of short touchdowns, but like you said, you also had an 89-yard touchdown run. You're a, you know, I mean, you're a big guy. You're a big guy then, but to outrun everybody and and cover 89 yards for a score, that's a, a real accomplishment. Yeah, you know that um, that equation that we, you know, ask, you know, kindergartners if a train coming at 80 miles per hour this way, right? 120 the other way. Which one meets first? Right. So I figured, you know, I use kindergarten geometry, if you will. I, I said, if I can run a straight line up the middle and the safeties are outside the hash, I should be able to get to the end zone before them. And uh, it worked out. That's a, good, that's a good geometry lesson right there. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty good. Worked out really well for you. You mentioned Coach Bryles a couple of times. You were uh, actually with him at the University of Houston is where you started your college career. And, and then uh, went to Texarkana for one year and then to Baylor. Um, what was that process like for you when you changed schools there in the middle of college? Uh, it was tough. I, I didn't know. Uh, and I, I tell a ton of people, I have a, a ton of brothers and sisters, eight brothers and two sisters, and I'm the ninth, and none of them finished college. Uh, they started a semester, but they didn't get past that. And so here I am a year in, my mom is sick, her, her health is failing. I'm back home every other weekend from Houston to, to DeKalb and just, you know, trying to be there for her. Uh, she passed early July. Uh, I left school and I'm like, man, I'm not going back to school because everything that was hard up until that point, you know, I was able to handle it because she was there. Uh, and then I started looking up to my brothers and sisters and, at the time, they weren't great role models in like, hey, this is how you meet adversity. And this is how you, you know, fight to become, you know, better. Um, so I, I, I met a guy who really changed my life and, and Brian Berry in Tex of Texarkana. Um, man, he invested a ton of time and, um, in me and just made me want to be the best I could be. You know, I got a phone call from Coach Clements uh, after my mom uh, um, had passed and, he said, you always have a family with me. And I don't know if he said, you know, anything about recruiting or, but when he said family, it just, it, it was different. It was different than someone just saying, like, hey, you're my brother, you're, you know what I mean, you're fam. It, it was different. And so I hung up the phone with him and I called him back the next day and I said, hey, man, I want to come to Baylor. And then we started the whole process of going to Baylor uh, and transferring out of my scholarship at Houston, uh, which I had already signed for that, that calendar year. Uh, the difficult part is that Sumlin wasn't big on releasing athletes. Mm -hmm. If he would have released me, I would have been at Baylor uh, <clears throat> in 2008, 
and I would have been able to learn offense and, and build up a little bit more camaraderie with the guys and the team uh, and been around the program. Uh, probably would have been able to f further my education a little bit more, even though I graduated in, you know, three and a half years at Baylor. Um, and then went back to get my master's. But, you know, going back home to Texarkana was hard. It was very humbling. Uh, being one of the best players in, you know, my high school ever and to be at home and, you know, coach wanted me to help out and, you know, seeing all these people who didn't believe in me, thought I was done just like everyone else. Uh, it was very humbling to be home. But I had a vision, um, thanks to our brows and Coach Clements. Uh, and Brian Berry to to continue to play football one day. And uh, we knew it was going to be at Baylor. So I came to Baylor overweight because I, I was eating too many steaks and potatoes at home. Uh, but Coach Kaz Kazadi got me right. And uh, man, the rest was history. It was, it was a tough, it was a tough tra transition. And, um, and I still think about my mom to this day. Uh, and I, a lot of what I have accomplished, I attribute to um, all her hard work and, uh, success it was a tough time and, and tough to make that move and made tougher because you lost your mom in that in that stretch that was a real uh pivotal part in your life wasn't it uh, i mean totally yeah it was um you know a lot of times we just don't grieve uh properly and we try to hold it in and we be we're the strong one uh it took me a year to grieve you know my mom died in july and you know, I was up in Philly training with my uncle in, in March of the next year when I finally shed tears over it. Uh, because, I, you know, it, sometimes as men, we don't think uh, being vulnerable uh, is strength. Um, but over the years after having kids, being vulnerable and, you know, understanding that you don't have to be the strongest person in the room uh, actually helps you out a, a ton. And, you know, it, it took me a while to, to come to grips with that. Uh, and I struggled with it for much of my time at Baylor. But um, knowing that there are great people that I've been around uh, that helped me through uh, challenging situations and, and made me better. And, you know, I remember when, you know, I was at Baylor and Walter invited a few of us out to his house and just to spend time with him because we couldn't go home all the time. He had a family there and he introduced us to his family and, you know, you know, cook for us and let us love on them. And they loved on us. I, I think that's what makes you know, this journey through life uh, worth it because you have people at Baylor that truly respect you as a human, love you as a friend, and, and take care of you as family. Wow, amen to that. That's very well said. Uh, if you folks who are with us have any questions for Terrence, uh, just go to the bottom of the screen. There's a Q&A chat uh, option there. Just type in your question. Uh, Terrence, I'll, I'll, I'll go through, I'll call through those before we throw them on you. <laughs> but if you folks uh, that are with us today, we welcome you. And, and if you have any questions that you'd like to uh, throw at him, just put those in the chat uh, Q&A there at the bottom of the screen. You mentioned your uncle in Philadelphia, uh, that's Jeremiah Trotter, a name a lot of folks will recognize, the NFL uh, player. Uh, what would you, what'd you learn from him football wise and otherwise? Um, fear no man. And I think, um, you know, sometimes we, we look at stats and accolades and we're like, man, we're going up against this guy. He's the best guy to do this. And uh, he just always told me to fear no man. Uh, the only person that we should fear, he should respect all men, but fear no man. And, um, and I think it made me play with a, a different, you know, um, anger and aggression. And if you know me, I'm not angry or uh, I don't think I have, <laughs> a sense of high aggression, but um, it just made me play more focused uh, because, you know, I didn't put anything past anybody, but I wasn't going to cower down to uh, big moments or uh, big opportunities. And so it just uh, made me seize every opportunity that I had. Uh, and, and then, I mean, just, you know, working out with him and seeing how fast and big he was, you know, I, I was a big back and, you know, at college at six foot, 235. But this guy is 6'3", 250, and you're just thinking, like, it's no way someone should move like that. I mean, he's, you know, he's built like a, a DN, and he's, you know, covering tight ends out of the backfield and stuff like that. But uh, me out, out of the slot. And, um, man, it's just – it was fun to work out with him and a couple of other pros while I was there and 
get to hang out and live his life for a few weeks. That's pretty cool. That's a good story. Uh, you mentioned your high school, the Cab High School, and uh, I said you had three 200-yard games at Baylor. You had three 300-yard games at uh, at the Cab High School, and and looking at the numbers, your biggest game numbers-wise was against Clarksville. You know where I'm going here. Uh, 417 yards rushing and six touchdowns in that game. Uh, man, that's a game to remember, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, it, it was a district showdown. I think we're both nine and zero, or yeah. uh, and we had to, you know, win that game to, you know, for seeding purposes in the playoff. And man, um, coach was like, "Hey, we're gonna run the ball," and we ran the ball sixty-seven times. We didn't pass the ball one time. Oh, is that right? <laughs> I, I fall back, and I had forty-six touches, and it was just. It was crazy. Um, uh, I got hurt early in that game. Uh, uh, and, and so when he didn't come out, uh, I didn't even go in the locker room and have to go. Um, but, man, that was a crazy game. It was a fun game. If you ever get to watch that highlight, uh, you'll get a kick at the yards that everyone's built like, um, you know, Tevin Reese out there. Just yeah. a lot slower. Yeah. And and you got hurt in that game and still finished with those numbers? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I cracked my shin in that game. I cracked my shin like the second drive of the game. And so I had it taped up. I had a bunch of stuff on it, uh, wrapped and compressed, uh, and I limped for most of that game. The next morning, I, I took a flight to Houston, and uh, I did my official visit at Houston and slept through the entire football game that they had. Oh. And I remember them telling me, you know, he, he is not coming to Houston. Uh, <laughs> he, he is, he's disinterested in anything we have to offer. Uh, uh, J-Mo, yeah. can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. It's uh, it's fading a little bit, but you're back now. I think you're okay, good. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, we got you. All Sorry. right. Uh, so let, let's uh, tell us about your family now. What what uh, tell us about your family and your kids and what you're doing now, business wise. <clears throat> you know, I like to rehash uh, one of those favorite moments at, at Baylor. It, it wasn't me being a player. It was last year against uh, Oklahoma when my family uh, and I were on the field for. The Baylor legend. Uh, I would like to thank Walter and all his team to, you know, put that together. It was really class act. Um, but to be there with my kids, uh, it was probably an expensive moment because now all of them want to go to Baylor, um, and I probably can't afford it, afford it all for them. I think the last ones on our list, we ran out of money uh, on you. But that was probably the, one of the most proudest Baylor moments I've ever had. You know, to be there with my wife and four kids. Um, Camilla seven, Zayd is six, Gigi is four, and Morris is one. Uh, they're loving um, life right now. They they've been at home since March, like most of everyone's kids. Um, it's been extremely challenging because I can't do what I want to do as far as work, and I never knew how much I enjoy leaving home and then coming home and seeing them after I, I spent half the day out of the house. But waking up with them and going to bed with them all day, it's like, man, gosh, do y'all not have like a, a uncle or a grandfather that can come keep y'all or something? <laughs> uh, but it's been, it's been truly uh, a, a really big blessing because you get to see their personalities a lot more when you're around. And uh, my youngest daughter, she just, she clings to me. Every time I move, she wants to move. If I run to the store, she wants to be right there with me. And um, it's been really fun getting to know them and how, and how they're different with each other. Uh, I have to give a huge shout out to my wife because uh, having all of us at home, including myself, meaning we eat a ton. Yeah. And we use a lot of laundry. And my wife does a great job of making our house go. And sometimes I'll be working. She needs to come in, close my computer and tell me to wash dishes or we're not going to eat. And um, I have to go do that. So uh, Jenny's the the backbone of our family. But, man, it's been 
uh, incredible last six months just hanging out with the family. Work-wise, I work with Stryker, a medical technology company, global, uh, but I'm over at Dallas Fort Worth in Southern Oklahoma. Uh, it's been extremely slow. There's some areas of our company that have, you know, benefited from uh, some of the emergency funds that has been created by our government. Uh, for most part, it's been extremely slow and um, the, the sales process has been um, unpredictable, if you will. And so we have uh, about 65% of our revenue is um, inpatient surgeries. And when that was closed down, you know, we're a $13 billion company. So when you think about that, that's a lot of money that's lost. Uh, fortunately, I'm still working. I still have a job. Uh, just uh, if anyone's out there in the hospital administration needs to buy something from me, uh, just let me know and uh, I I'll, come, I'll come quick. Gigi might be with me, but uh, we'll make it happen. That's great. That's great. Thanks for sharing that with you. So you have a great family. I remember uh, seeing y'all here for that uh, legend presentation last year. That was fun. Uh, here's a couple of questions from those that are tuned in listening. You ready for this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go ahead. You can handle these. All right. Blake Harris is with us. Hey, Blake. And he says, uh, what are your thoughts on Coach Aranda and his staff? They have been doing well on the recruiting trail. Yeah, Blake, thanks for, for joining. Um, I think Coach Aranda is a, a genius, a defensive genius. It's going to be interesting to see how well we, um, we can back uh, fill some of those defensive linemen that we lost. I think in order for us to have a great defense, you ha it has to be led by the guys up front because you can get in some packages, you can see more, send more blitzes, and you can disguise things better when you have three, four guys that can hold their own up front. Uh, it'll be interesting what he lets um, uh, the offensive coordinator do, uh, because the more he does, I think for, uh, Fedora is a great coach. The more he does, I think it'll suit the offense a lot better. It'll be interesting if he's totally hands off and just likes the OC be OC. Uh, we don't know what he's gonna do because it's his first time as head coach. But right now, it seems like, you know, we're doing uh, everything well. And then um, Charlie Brewer and, uh, and Fedora are gelling well. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how we backfill some of those positions on defense, though. We lost a lot of talent. Man, that's a really good assessment. You, you should be on TV. <laughs> oh, wait, you were on TV. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think we're doing it this year. But it, it was, it's, been, it's been fun. Yeah, how did you like that? How did you like that? It was it was fun. It, it was good fun. At it. And, you know how I got um, in and we there were some people that won this you know you know this event and they could come up to Baylor and learn from coaches. I think a lot of the coaches were out recruiting and so they asked me if I was in town. I can go over some plays and talk to some things. And one of the um, you know audience, one of the person in the audience was uh, the director over KWTX and he's like, hey, I think we should put a show together and have you on. I was like, hey, listen, right. I, I love to do it. Yeah. And so it, it, it's been fun, man. It was, it was fun to, um, to get this thing kicked off. And, uh, and we had a little great spot over there by the river um, right there at McLean Stadium. Yeah, you did a great job. You were really good at that. Uh, we'll keep that in mind. We'll give you some air time when we can, okay? Yes, sir. Yeah. Please do. All right, here's another question from Allison Blendon. Hey, Allison. And she says, uh, you played all your games, your career here at Floyd Casey Stadium. Uh, since you didn't get to play at the new stadium, what do you think about McLean? Uh, hey, Allison, thanks for joining as well. Um, McLean is great. It's, it's beautiful. It's aesthetic. I think we finally made it home. The first few years, uh, it was just, it just felt like we were at a away game, at least to me, you know, to the guys that first showed up on campus, you know, it was always home to them. But to me, it was, you know, Floyd Casey uh, was great. It was home. We won a lot of games there. We held a, a record for how many home games we won. Um, and, um, you know, the way we closed Floyd Casey down was great, you know, beating Texas, winning a Big 12 championship, turning out all the lights for the final time and then opening up at you know McLean it was great uh, and it's been a fun ride I think we finally you know unpacked all the boxes and you know hung up all the pictures and it's be it's became home and I think as you know Matt Rule said the 
standard of what to expect when it come to weight. You know, 45,000 people in green and gold, yelling loud. Uh, this will be one of the toughest places to play in the big 12. All right, you're fading on us a little bit Did there. Did you lose uh, me? Yeah, I got, I got the gist of it there. Sorry about that. Here, here's another question. Say again? Am I back? Yeah, you're good. You're good now. I'm sorry. Uh, Tess, Tess Jamerson is on with us. Tess, appreciate you being with us. She says, what was the biggest adjustment after Baylor and after football? Uh, thanks, Tess, for joining. Uh, the biggest adjustment was probably understanding that I had a waiting line at an aer aer airport uh, now because – as an athlete, you, you know what I mean? The bus rolls right up to the plane. You get on the plane, and I hate flying. My wife, we drove down to Dallas, and she's like, just imagine flying with these kids. And I almost ran off the road uh, just to avoid that. Uh, but the, the biggest adjustment is, you know, just, you know, finding out what your worth is. Because so long and so, so much of your life is, is in, you know, football is just everything. You know, how people respond to you, how people talk to you. It's in the eyes of, hey, you're a football player, you're a legend, you're this and that. And so understanding that there's a ton of worth that you have and that you're valuable outside of sports. You know, fortunately, I got involved at FCA and West Sheary at Baylor. My dad was a pastor. And so I always knew that. Uh, it was still a difficult transition once I left, left Baylor and, and stopped playing football because – you kind of just you, you like to get patted on the back sometimes and, and people are selfish and and I wanted to be selfish for a while and my wife said you can't be selfish anymore you have kids and uh, I've, I've learned a, a ton since then but I would think uh, any athlete even in high school uh, a lot of those athletes that transition into the real world as a normal student a normal person is we go through an identity crisis and what we actually mean to the people that have said they loved us and support us more. Uh, just know that they love you way more than what you can do on and off the field, uh, on the field. So that's very that's good. Did you, uh, do I remember right, did you give it a shot to play professionally, either uh, NFL or Canada or something, or did you not even uh, explore that? Yep, yep. So I was drafted by the Rams. Okay. And me drafted by the Jets, and I, I was there through training camp. Uh, I was released, and then I was picked up for a year in uh, uh, St. Louis. I played there. I just was done with football. I, I really wanted to do something different, you know. And, you know, Coach Browse always said if I stopped wanting to be president, I'd be a pretty good football player. I really love education. I really love learning. I really love challenging and growing and expanding my mind. Um, and so once I, you know, I played football, I think it was one of those things that my mom said I could make it. I made it. I was done. And I remember walking in Coach Fisher's office and saying, hey, I'm going back and I'm going to finish up grad school. I, I appreciate the offer. I appreciate everything. And he, he told me, like, listen, you can play in this league. You're going to play on this team. I'll give you a week to think about it. And I said, um, I won't need a week, but I appreciate it, sir. And I packed up all my bags and I came back to Waco. And that's when I worked at Baylor for a little bit before uh, resuming my, my graduate uh, career in uh, fall of 2016. Fall in 2013. 14, yeah. I'm sorry. Very good. All right, here's another question. Uh, Doug Furch is with us. Uh, Doug, former player at Baylor and coach. Uh, Doug says, uh, it's, this is a really good question. I'll be interested in your answer here. He says, do you believe the run set up the pass or did the pass set up the run? Um, so I'm going to just – I'm going to say the run sets up the pass. Okay. Yeah. Um, because when football first started, we started running the game, running the ball. When, like, you know, no one was really passing the ball. I mean, wide receivers out there in three-yard splits and, you know, split ends were – I mean, not three-yard splits, but, you know, three-point stands. Uh, and so passing has evolved. Uh, because of the run, and I think you can get away with not being successful, wildly successful either, if you have a great quarterback and you got a great scheme. But definitely, uh, if you can 
I think the running back sets up where the safeties position themselves. Okay. And any great defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator knows that where the safeties are in football will tell you exactly what play they're running, what blitz they're bringing, and all kinds of information. So I think running back placement and how well a running back is can bring that safety up. Then it makes that defense really one-dimensional. Yeah. So yeah. I would say running sets up the pass. Very good. That's great. And, and there was a misnomer about that team with Rob at quarterback, especially 2011, that it was pass, pass, pass. But it was really almost 50-50, wasn't it, run and pass? It was. And, and if you think about the success of uh, the following year uh, and how, how well Nick Florence started to play, yeah. I think we started out playing, you know, where Nick Florence was passing the ball a, a ton. And then when we got Lake on board and Lake started, you know, he rushed for a thousand yards in like six games, I believe. Um, the offense took off. Yeah. And then we went out there and we spanked UCLA um, in the um, uh, Holiday Bowl, I believe. And so it's, um, you, you can't, in, in my opinion, you can't be, you know, great without both of them. But Mike Leach is, you know, doing well without it. And I don't think Texas Tech did a lot of running and, you know, Patrick Mahomes did well without it. Um, but <clears throat> I think in order to be a really balanced offense, you, you definitely need both. Yeah, very good. Along those lines, uh, Robert Ingram says, uh, when, when you played, Baylor was labeled as a passing team. Did that label uh, help you play with an edge? Uh, no, not really, because the more of a passing team we were, the, the more people forgot about 24. <laughs> so all, all I had to do is, like, you know, we get a draw and I'll take it for 10 yards. You know, that has, that, you know that's padding stats, uh, if you will. Um, no, we, we, you know, you know, the knock on me is when I went to the combine, all these coaches asked me why I didn't catch the ball. You was a passing team. You only had six touchdowns, that means six catches. <clears throat> and I'm like, you know, you know, I named off all the receivers. Like, when do you throw me the ball? <laughs> you know, you got Kendall Wright, you, you got Josh Gordon, you got, you know, Terrence Williams, Lanier Sampson, Antoine Goodley, you know, Tevin Reese. Like, when do you throw a running back the ball? Yeah. Uh, and you, you never do. I mean, one of those guys got to be wide open, and they all run faster than me. And they're 40 yards down the field when they catch the ball. I mean, that's strategic advantage. And so – um, no, it, it didn't bother me at all. I, I think um, any great player who understands it, it's not about them and it's about a team will appreciate them just, you know, appreciate being a part of the team. All right, Andrew, Judy is on with us. Andrew, it's good to hear yeah. from you. And he says, uh, will you get into coaching someday? Uh, it's my dream. Uh, I, I wanted to coach college football uh, since day one. I think um, now it, it, I'm past that. I, I think um, I would I will be able to coach my kids and be able to be around them. But the more um, I think about it, the harder it'll be get it'll be to get in right now. Uh, I'm the sole breadwinner in my family, uh, and you have to take I have to take a huge pay cut to to go to college and be a GA, and then I will be away from my family you know, 90, 100 hours a week just with film and breakdown and all that stuff. So it's a, it's a goal of mine um, and how I always have been a dream of mine. But I, I just think of, I've outlived that dream and hopefully, um, you know, with all the hard work I can do now, I'll be able to allow my kids to live out their best dream. I got you. Uh, the, the thing about Andrew Judy, he probably wouldn't want me saying this. Oh, this would be good. Go, yeah. <laughs> Andrew, I played with Andrew Judy. We went to Kenya together and uh, on a mission trip. It was fun. When Judy gets dressed, the first thing he puts on is his socks. And no one in the locker room could ever figure that out. So that's, that's a, you know interesting tidbit about Andrew Judy. If y'all know him, he always put his socks on first. I don't know why, but that's him. Uh, even in Kenya? Did he do that when y'all were in Kenya? He, he, I don't, I don't, I don't know if he's one of those kids that always took off their diaper and ran around the house, but you know, everyone will be fully dressed and like the socks will be the last thing I put on. Right. And you know, a lot of times I'm wearing sandals 
and you know, jo uh, you know, Andrew Judy have these crew socks on, and you're like, with a towel, you're like, Judy, just put on clothes, man. Why socks? The first thing. That. But uh, that's that's Judy. He's a great guy, and he comes from a really great family out there in Crawford, Texas. That's cool. That's very good. Andrew uh, uh, types back. He says, my feet get cold. So there's his answer. <laughs> to that. So Andrew, there you go. Hey, I, I want to go back to uh, another game in 2011. And it, it, it sort of gets overshadowed by all the big wins you guys had that year. But early in the year, TCU, uh, 50 to 48 win. Uh, that was a great game and a great win for you guys. Uh, what do you remember about that game? Um, man, I, ju I just remember being so locked in, man. I, I wanted to, you know, I just wanted to, you know, lack for better words, I wanted to kill those linebackers, man. I want every moment I got, I wanted to run straight down their throat. I didn't want to run a zone. I didn't want to run a, a bubble. I wanted to run straight downhill. And I remember there was a play, you know, Tank Carter was their, you know, starting linebacker. Yep, yep. We're coming out of our end zone, and I run for two yards, and it's a collision in the, the huddle. And he wakes, and he gets up, and, man, he is holding his helmet. And, man, I felt good. And the next week he didn't play because he had a concussion. Oh, wow. And I just uh, – it was just one of those moments like, hey, we're, we're built for this. We've trained for this. Let's go out there and do it. It got dicey at the end um, um, of that game because um, TCU just rallied back, and we just kept going back and forward. And uh, we we set up, um, we got in good field field position and set up a field goal. Made the field goal. Um, if you ask me before he made the field goal, was he gonna make it? I wasn't very confident because he missed a couple in practice that week. So, uh, but he lined it up and kick seals it off with the interception later that uh, the next drive. Uh, I, we were on top of the world then, man. We just felt great to our eyes. Uh, I think it helps set the tone for the season. Wow. All right, a couple Hello. final thoughts Hello. here. Uh, you mentioned you came back to Baylor and you got your – are you with us? You came back and yeah, you got I'm, your uh, master's degree from Baylor. What was your motivation there to come back and, and get a second degree from Baylor? Yeah, um, I have four kids. Well, I had three kids, two kids at the time, and, and me and my wife were both in grad school. And um, we actually had our third kid before she graduated with her PhD in chemistry and I graduated with my MBA. But my motivation was I, I truly want to lead and, and run an organization. Um, I, I believe empowering people to achieve their wildest dreams and all the goals that they set forth uh, for themselves is, is pretty remarkable. And so I got an MBA because um, <clears throat> I, at first, initially, I wanted to lead in healthcare organization uh, at CO, COO, CEO capacity. Uh, now I work at Striker. Striker is global. Uh, I, I would like to be a, uh, a brand manager uh, of a global business. I think, you know, once I can have that on my resume, I think it opens up a lot more doors to do anything. Um, uh, and, and then... You know, I just, I, I like serving people. And so I think the best way to serve people is to be educated and informed and, and get my MBA from Baylor is one of the, the best programs in the country. I learned from some great professors and um, uh, I, I think it was just truly remarkable that um, I was able to get both degrees from there. One was free. The other one, I'm, I'm, I got a couple of thousand uh, left on uh, student loans, but uh, man, it was fun to to be back on campus uh, for some of those 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 fun years at Baylor, uh, there at McLean as well. Yeah, very cool. What uh, what would you say? Final question about your overall experience at Baylor. I mean, you didn't start there, but you finished there at Baylor and two degrees from there. You know, to think about think about Baylor's impact on you as a person, as an athlete, uh, spiritually, socially, academically. Uh, well, the total impact that Baylor had on you. 
Yeah, I, I would say that um, it's a big part of who I am today. You know, I think, you know, the grit uh, and the life lessons I learned growing up in Decap, Texas helped a ton. But the relationships I built at Baylor that I still have today, I mean, I've had, you know, so many people um, reach out to me uh, just in the last couple of days and weeks about being on this. Uh, it's, it's truly fam family uh, where uh, you have that sense of belonging, but also uh, that anything is possible. You know, I was a small town kid, grew up with, you know, hardly anything had a bunch of family, slept on beds with four or five people, uh, didn't have a lot to, you know, put my name on after I left DCAP to go to college. Uh, but <clears throat> the relationships and the network that, that Baylor has to keep their athletes involved and, you know, what Walter does at the B Association with networking people and getting people uh, connected, um, I think it, it truly sets up the future of, uh, of Baylor and, and how well we respond. I, I think that what we do at Baylor can change the world. I think what we do at Baylor is changing the world. Uh, the leadership, the hard decisions we've had to make, I think people are gonna have to you know, look at us as a beacon of hope and, and dark moments uh, and unwavering faith that we can be the best part of uh, us every day. And so, Baylor's just been special to me. I'm truly grateful I found my wife there. Um, I had one of my kids in Waco. So it's it's always going to be a part of me. Um, man, I'm just grateful to be a part of uh, of, of some of you, you guys' life and, and, and bring such special memories to you as well.